One nice spring night, Mr. Fox was sitting in his balcony, relaxing and drinking his favorite juice, when suddenly the phone rang. He wondered who would be calling him this time of night. Hello, who is it? Mr. Fox, it's Rorik. Your Majesty, how may I help you? Well, Mr. Fox, I'd like you to come to my house early in the morning to discuss something urgent. Of course, I'll be there. After he hung up the phone, Mr. Fox went to sleep. He was supposed to wake up early. He wouldn't want to miss his appointment with the king. Early next morning, Mr. Fox woke up and went to wash his face. After that, he got dressed and was all ready for his appointment with the king. He got into his car and drove off. Hello, Mr. Fox. One moment, please. Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived. May he come in? Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Your Majesty. Hope I'm not late. No, no. You're always on time. How are you, Mr. Fox? I'm fine. And how's our little Frisky? He's fine. A little mischief every now and then. You can never get him to stay in one place. But thanks to your bracelet, we can always find him. Saved us a lot of trouble. It's my pleasure. So tell me about this urgent matter. As you know, our jungle's population has been increasing lately. Indeed. Our population has increased. Yes. But it's getting harder to summon them all to the meeting every time. Hmm. That's why I called you, Mr. Fox. I need you to figure out a way for me to reach all the animals at the same time. Let me see. I need to think this through. That's okay, Mr. Fox. But please, don't take too much time. Don't you worry, Your Majesty. I will find a solution by tomorrow. As Mr. Fox got into his car to get back home, he thought all the while about the king's request. How could he help the king with his problem? With everything else Mr. Fox has faced, this might be a slightly bigger challenge for him. Hmm, this is more challenging than I thought. Maybe a short break will help. Mr. Fox went back to his house and sat on his sofa. Since he can't think anymore about the king's request, he thought it would be great just to relax and watch his favorite TV show. Everything was peaceful and quiet. But then suddenly... I got it! Mr. Fox rushed back to his workshop. He quickly designed a new device. He carried the new device to his car, and off he went to King Rorik's place. Mr. Fox, 
I thought you were coming tomorrow. Did you solve my problem? Yes, your majesty. This is a solution to your problem. That's great. But what's that, Mr. Fox? This is a megaphone. I made it specially for you. Every time you need to meet the animals, all you have to do is roar into it. Mr. Fox, you're a genius. <laughs> but be careful. It's powerful. So make sure that no one is around you when you use it. Of course. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Fox. You're a great asset to all of us. It's my pleasure, Your Majesty. Goodbye, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox got into his car and waved goodbye to the king. He was feeling happy and pleased. The problem was now solved, and he was able to help out a friend once more. Just imagine, if you woke up one day and all your food was gone, your house was a big mess, and the oven was turned on. What happened exactly? You really can't tell. But that's what happened to our friend Giselle. It was a lovely morning, just like all others. But when Giselle arrived, she was burdened with troubles. Hmm, these are good. Yeah, my mom makes the best pancakes in the world. Look, it's Giselle. Hey, Giselle, come join us. Have some of these delicious pancakes. Thanks. I'm not hungry. What's wrong, Giselle? You guys, I think a thief broke into my house. What? Food has been going missing from my home, but I didn't think much of it. But the amount of food disappearing kept getting bigger and bigger. And yesterday, all of my food went missing. And there was a huge mess at my house. I even found the oven turned on. My house could have burned to the ground. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you okay? This sounds really dangerous. What if this happens to my house next? Calm down. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can deal with it. Giselle, let's go to your house and check it out. And so, they left for Giselle's house. They had no idea what would be waiting for them. Oh dear, what a mess. Did you not hear them at all? I heard noises, but by the time I got up, they were gone. Did they take anything else other than food? No, nothing else is missing. So how do you explain all this mess? Maybe they were trying to find their way in the dark. I think Bingo's right. They didn't want to turn the lights on so no one would see them. Yes, but there are more important things. A thief had been here last night, and I don't think Giselle had time to worry about all the dishes. You're right. These are not mine. I didn't use these. That means that whoever was here didn't just steal the food. They ate it all here. That would explain why the oven was on. They cooked! Okay, calm down. We'll figure out a plan to catch them. But first, let's clean everything up. They started cleaning the house, trying to help their poor friend out, while being so worried about what's going to happen next. Any idea how we're going to catch them? I have an idea. We'll have a neighborhood watch. You know, we'll stay up around the house so we can catch them as soon as they come near. Sounds great. Giselle, why don't you go and get some sleep? We'll take care of it. Thanks, guys. They all sat in anticipation, ready to jump on the thief without any hesitation. But hours passed by with no one in sight. They started to become very, very tired. Does anybody else feel a little bit sleepy? Yeah, and cold, and a little hungry. <sighs> Parrot, do you see anyone from up there? <sighs> no, no one's around. 
Guys, you can go home. I'll stay here for the rest of the night. I'm not tired. Good morning. What happened after we left? Did you see them? I heard a noise from the bushes near the house, but no one was there. They must have seen me, got scared, and ran away. Wow, you must have looked so tough. How did you get them so scared? I'll teach you guys. First, you have to stand chin up, hands on your waist, and look so focused. Then, you walk back and forth, back and forth in front of the house, so they wouldn't have a chance. Don't get distracted by anything, and most importantly, carry a weapon. A weapon? Yes, these are mine. A salt shaker and a ladle? It's a pepper shaker. You sprinkle it in their eyes and then hit them with a ladle. Ooh, scary. Okay, I think I got it. I'm going to be on neighborhood watch duty tonight. I'll go get ready. See you all later. And so, with a big responsibility to bear, Bingo guarded the house, steady and aware. Zebra, what are you doing? What? Where am I? Giselle's house. <gasps> what is that noise? Did you catch it? Yes, it's Zebra. He's been sleepwalking and eating all your food. Oh, no! Giselle, I'm so sorry. I wasn't stealing your food. This happened before. I sleepwalk a lot. Don't be mad. I can't believe it's been you all along. That is so funny. <laughs> You're not going to tell everyone about it, are you? If she doesn't, I will. I knew you couldn't scare a thief away with a ladle. You could! You know what? I'm just happy Giselle is safe. I'll just go home now. I need some sleep. <laughs> Sunny morning, as Mr. Fox was having his morning coffee and reading his newspaper in the balcony, his phone rang. Who could it be so early in the morning? Hello. Hello, Mr. Fox. It's Rorick. Oh, hello, Rorick. How are you today? Not very good, I'm afraid. Why is that? My piano. I tried playing it today, but it sounds weird. How so? I don't know. Could you please come and check it out? Sure, I'm on my way. Thank you, Mr. Fox. I'll be waiting for you. And I'll be right there. So, quickly, Mr. Fox changed his clothes. He took his toolbox and his car keys, got into his car, and drove off to Rorik's place. Hello, Mr. Fox. One moment, please. 
Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived. Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Rorik. I came right away. Oh, you're here, Mr. Fox. Please help me with my piano. It's the only thing that comforts me. Don't worry, Rorik. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Fox started to check the piano. He tried playing a few notes. What is it, Mr. Fox? Is it broken? Mr. Fox, please answer me. It sounds horrible. It's not broken, Rorik. It just needs tuning. <gasps> Do I have to buy a new one? No, Rorik. It's very simple. I can tune it for you. Really? Thank you, Mr. Fox. I almost had a heart attack. However... Oh, no. Not that word. I'm sorry, but it might take a while. Oh, it's okay. I can wait. Okay, then. I'll get started. Please, Mr. Fox, do your best. It's my everything. Don't worry. It'll be good as new. Mr. Fox opened his toolbox, grabbed a few things, and started to work. Beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Told you everything will be all right. I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Anytime, Rorik. And with that, Mr. Fox's work was all done. He waved goodbye and drove along happily. He had helped out a friend once more. For helping each other is everything you could ever wish for. Coming. Good morning, Mr. Fox. Hello, my friends. Come on, let's go to the backyard. We, we can't, can't wait, wait to hear, hear the rest, rest of the story. Slow down, I can't understand you. I'll tell you, Mr. Fox. We came running here to listen to the rest of the story. Ah, okay then. What are we waiting for? Let's start now! Mr. Dumfrey, you have no idea how much you've helped us! We're really grateful for your ears, you know! Thank you very much! I'm always honored to help everyone, sir! Wait! I sense vibration in my ears from that direction! Huh? Follow me! Here! Something is definitely here! Speedo! Come quickly, we'll start digging. Speeder, wait! and goes back to the Mesozoic era, the Triassic period to be precise. This is so rare! Oh my, the Mesozoic era. 
What an extraordinary discovery! But we have to make sure! Of course we will. We still have more sites to excavate today. Are you ready, Mr. Dumfrey? No problem at all. But I'll need some juice barrels to regain my powers. Speeder, bring three barrels of juice for Mr. Dumfrey immediately. Come on in. I'm glad that I have this high table here. Oh, sorry. You can't stand and talk. You have to sit down to look at my teeth. Well, I really hope that your teeth will help me make the right decision. Don't worry at all. I'm here for your own welfare and saving. I hope so, Mr. Lucky. This new job won't suit me. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Lucky. You saved me from a lot of trouble. You're a very important person in our jungle. No problem. I believe I was gifted to protect and help the people. If I didn't live up to the gift, it might be taken away from me. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Lucky. I'm sure you're gonna save lots of people as you did for me. Number 82? Please come in. Hey, why don't we go to Mr. Lucky? We need to know his final decision. I'm sorry, I can't today. Mr. Dumfrey discovered an ancient site last week, and I really want to go to the opening ceremony. Hmm, they became very famous. If I want to stay in control, I have to know their weaknesses. Maybe reading about gold will uncover the facts. Hello, Fangs. Long time no see. Last time you came here, you were very young and you came with your mother to buy a book. Yeah, it was a long time ago. So you came to read, huh? Reading is very important. I read everything in this library. That's great. Now, I need a book about gold. Ah, gold. It's becoming the mainstream nowadays. A rabbit with a golden tooth and a camel with a golden ear. I think there is a relation between the two. And I think you're losing it because of all this reading. There can't be a relation between both of them. What? Uh, nothing. I just meant uh, that the book that I need has nothing to do with those gifts. I'm just researching about gold and its medical use. You know, for the new technology. There it is, Mr. Gold Researcher. <laughs> Thank you. And since this is my first visit to the library from a long time, you'll give it to me for free, of course. Goodbye, Mr. Bear Latto. Huh? Who said it's for free? That old bear is really smart. It must be the reading that made him understand the connection between the two gifts. I think reading makes you understand a lot of stuff and gives you knowledge. Fortunately... Not many people read in the jungle. Yes, found it. Gold properties. Gold is known for its shine. And to keep gold shiny, scientists use a substance called ammonia. Ah, yes, that's it. Gold brightens and dims. When anyone looks into Lucky's teeth to see their future, it becomes clear as a mirror. And if a mirror is not as clear as crystal, <laughs> no one will see anything. I can buy two liquids, <laughs> one to dim the gold and another to brighten it. And then I'll enter his house, oh, I mean my house, and put the dimming liquid on his teeth. And when the glow fades, <laughs> it will surely affect Dumfries' ears as well. The letter said it, and I'll be in control of both powers. Oh yes, no matter what they do, they'll never be able to stop me! <laughs> and that was the end of our story for today, my friends. We have to stop his fangs. We can't let him just do all these evil actions. <laughs> Calm down, Giselle. Yes, that fang.
Kang should get what he deserves. <laughs> well, do you still remember what I told you yesterday? Yes, good always wins over evil. Well done, but don't be late next time. Mr. Fox was known for his kindness in helping others. Everyone went to him for advice, even Woody, the jungle carpenter. After being assigned the task of building a really big ship, he went to Mr. Fox, seeking his wisdom. Mr. Fox listened carefully to what Woody had to say, and in turn, promised to help him. He started a research on shipbuilding, and after hours and hours of hard work, he finally got it. Yes, I've got it! But there is something I need to check first. Mr. Fox went for a walk in the jungle, looking carefully at every tree on his path. Then he stopped in front of one and said, Yes, that's the one! Immediately, Mr. Fox took a paint bucket. He wanted to mark the tree, so he wouldn't forget which one it was. After that, he got into his car and drove off. When he got home, he called Woody to tell him that he had found the perfect solution to his problem. It only took a few minutes before... Oh, Woody, right on time! Come on, Mr. Fox, tell me! Okie dokie, come in! I finally figured it out! I never doubted you, Mr. Fox! I was sure you'd be the one to help me find an answer to my problem. Oh, don't mention it. Here you go. These are blueprints. They're guidelines that will help you learn how to build the ship easily. Woody started reading the blueprints thoroughly. He knew most of what was written in it. So he looked up and said, It's a lot easier than I thought. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Oh, um, but Mr. Fox, what about the materials that I'll need to build it? Here's a list of all the materials you'll need. And what about the kind of wood I should use, Mr. Fox? I did extensive reading, and I found out that our ancestors were famous for using teak in the process of building ships, as it's really stiff, strong, and it can also be shaped to have wide planks, which would help the ship to withstand the waves of the sea. But I... I know you don't know what teak is. Not everyone does. But come along. I think it would be better to show you the tree I found earlier in the jungle. Our jungle? Of course. Everything you dream of can be found in our beautiful jungle. Mr. Fox got into his car with Woody by his side and drove off. They headed towards the tree that Mr. Fox had marked earlier. Here's the tree. Huh? I have loads of that wood in my store, but I never knew that I could use it to build ships. I didn't know about teak either, but with a little bit of research, everything is open to you, my friend. Mr. Fox, I can't thank you enough. I'm really happy right now. I'll never forget what you've done for me. It's my pleasure, Woody. Now that I know what I should do, I'll go back and start building that ship for Nate as fast as I could. Thank you again, Mr. Fox. So, after helping his friend, Mr. Fox got into his car and drove away happily. You know, it's true what they say. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Jumbo's birthday. He was dancing and playing with his friends, hoping this day would never end. Everyone ran to hide all the same. 
but Jumbo slipped and fell. And that was the end of the game. All the animals heard the fall, but Mommy Jumbo ran before them all. <gasps> Jumbo! Oh, Jumbo. Combo, you have to take him to Mr. Fox immediately. So, without further delay, off to Mr. Fox's house, they hurried away. Hey, Mrs. Combo, what's wrong? Help me, Mr. Fox. Jumbo is ill. Oh, please come in. You look cold, Jumbo. I'll get you something hot to drink. Thank you, Mr. Fox. We were celebrating Jumbo's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Jumbo! Thank you, Mr. Fox. But as he was playing with his friends, he slipped and fell into the pond. He started shivering and sneezing. I feared he might be sick, so I thought I should bring him to you, just in case. Well, why don't you lie down, Jumbo, and let's take your temperature. Open your mouth, say, ah. Ah. Fever, stuffy nose, red dots all over his trunk. It's definitely Sniffles. Oh my, Sniffles? Don't worry, Mrs. Combo. It's just a Sniffles fever. It will go away. All you need, champ, is some rest and just one pill of antidote. And when you're better, you can go back to play with your friends. Thank you, Mr. Fox. After thanking Mr. Fox, Mrs. Combo took Jumbo back home to let him rest. All right, Jumbo, now all you need to do is follow Mr. Fox's advice and keep Mr. Thermometer under... Uh, under... Under my tongue? To find out if I'm all better so I can go outside and play with my friends? But first, you gotta... Sort of, uh, gotta... Uh, <laughs> keep my thermometer in my mouth? Right, son. You can count on me. Now, you'll stay put and... <gasps> Uh, I add, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Call me when it beeps. Frisky, how are you? Hi, Mr. Fox. Roo and I were playing and I'm about to win! Listen, Frisky, I'm going to visit Jumbo now and check on him. I'm sure he'd be really happy if you and Roo come with me. What do you think? Great idea, Mr. Fox. I want to check on him too. We'll meet you there. As agreed, Mr. Fox met Frisky and Roo at Jumbo's house. I'm coming! Hello, Mrs. Combo. We came to check on Jumbo. I hope he's feeling better now. Why, yes, Mr. Fox. Come in, everyone. Hey, Jumbo! I came to check on you. And I brought your friends along, too. Are you feeling better now? Hi, Mr. Fox. Hi, guys. Hey, Jumbo. How are you feeling? Well, I feel better, but... Well, we need to take your temperature one more time, Jumbo. Is it time? It's time, all right. What does it say? Well, let's see. Your temperature is, um... Oh! Your temperature is just fine and dandy, Jumbo. You're not sick anymore. You are A-OK. -okay. Yes! Now we can go outside and play. But first, I need to tell Mom. Mom? Mom? Where could she be? She's not in the kitchen. Mom? She's not in the living room. 
I wonder where she is. I'm here, in the bedroom. What? <laughs> Mom, are you okay? I think I might have caught a case of sniffles too. What? <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll be fine. Now why don't you go out and play hopscotch with your friends? I'll join you when I get better. But mom, I won't be happy if I go to play and leave you here all by yourself. I'll be only thinking of you. So, what do you think you should do, little Jumbo? I have to sit here and take care of you, mommy. You always take care of me when I get sick. I'll take care of you and never leave you alone. Oh, I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, Jumbo. Now it's time to take your temperature. Right, Mr. Fox? You're absolutely right, Jumbo. So rather than go out to play, by his mother's side, he decided to stay.